What's up YouTube, JR Flagman here and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to measure your camber with nothing but a string and a measuring tape and maybe some calculations. To get set up, take a weight and tie it to the end of your string and then hang that string from something that's taller than your wheel. I use this camera tripod but really that's immaterial. Anything you got taller than your wheel is important though. When we position this string hanging down we want to make sure it's going right through the center line of our wheel like I show here. The closer you can get to the center line, the better. You want to be measuring the lowest low and the highest high point on your wheel. So, once that's set up, grab a measuring tape and, as I show here, go to the bottom edge of your wheel and take a measurement to the string. And then you're going to go up and take a measurement from the top of the wheel. It is important to note here that if you're not parked on a level surface, your readings are going to be inaccurate. So, make sure you found something level, a parking lot, a garage, whatever you got, because that part is going to be pretty important. Now write down your measurements and we're going to be finding the difference between them and then using some trigonometry to find out where our target is. Here are my measurements. You can see I got one and five eighths inch on the bottom and two and a quarter inch on the top for a difference of five eighths of an inch. Now we don't usually measure camber in inches, we usually measure it in degrees. And my target here is negative one degree, at least in the rear. And we're going to use the following function to figure out what that would correspond to in inches. So take your wheel diameter, in my case, 17 inches, and multiply this by the inverse or arc sign of your target angle, negative one degree. Make sure you're using degrees mode on your calculator, or I used Wolfram Alpha, it's sort of an online calculator search engine, works great. And this came out with the result of 0.2967 inches. And 0.2967 is about 4.716ths of an inch, which is pretty close to four and a half sixteenths, which would be nine thirty seconds. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. Below here, you can see the measurements that I got in the end, but that's after many, many iterations of this adjustment that I'm showing. So here we are underneath the car and we're looking at this adjustable control arm. Often these are needed if you want more adjustment for your camber and sometimes for your toe as well, depending on the vehicle. A lot of vehicles from the factory don't have much or sometimes any adjustment at all. And the fact that I put new lowered suspension on this car means that to correct my camber, I need to get these arms. In the front of the car, you often need to buy camber plates to accomplish the same goal. Now, if you haven't lowered your vehicle and you're running on everything else being stock suspension from the factory and your camber is way off, it often indicates a broken or bent part. So I wouldn't go out and buy these if you have factory suspension just to correct bad camber until you know what the reason is. Because if you've got bent parts somewhere else, this is only going to be throwing a band-aid on it and it's not really going to help you out. You're going to be paying more money in the end to get it fixed the right way. You can see me messing around with this thing here. Basically the idea is you lengthen or shorten this rod. It has threaded ends and a threaded sleeve and those two red little lock nuts on there. I'd never done this before, I just kind of eyeballed them when I first installed them and I wasn't really sure how far I needed to go in which direction. And I also want to note here that it looks like I'm doing something very unsafe by working under a car that's been jacked up in the air without a jack stand, but I will make you aware of the edge of the bumper at the top of the screen. You can see that my body is actually not under the car, it's only my arms and the car even when it's sitting on the ground, is above the height of my arms. I was just getting the tire off the ground so that I could work with it. Now once your car is set back on the ground, give it a few good shakes side to side, back and forth, up and down, maybe even roll it forward and backward a few times. You want to make sure that any adjustments you just made haven't bound up anything when you set the car down and that everything's perfectly settled. You can see this means we're going to have to move this string again. So eyeball it or measure it as close as you can to that center line. And I will note that the distance you are out from the wheel won't matter because we're going to be subtracting that anyway when we're taking the difference between the measurements. So if you're an inch away from the wheel or two miles away from the wheel, it really wouldn't matter as long as your measurements are accurate in the first place. However, I find the closer you are, the easier it is to measure. Go ahead and take new measurements from the bottom and from the top. And if you compare this to earlier, you can probably already see that my wheel's standing a lot straighter and my negative camber is nearly eliminated, almost back to the setting I wanted. So I hope the video helped you guys out. I'm gonna bring the formula back up on screen. It's right there on that target line. And where I have the 17, that will be your wheel diameter in inches. And where I have my negative one degree in the arc sine function, 
that will be your target camber angle. And I want to stress that 0.2967 inches that I got, or approximately 930 seconds, that only works for plus or minus one degree of camber and on a 17 inch wheel. If you're looking for just under a degree or just over a degree or whatever you're looking for, if it's not exactly one degree, and if you don't exactly have a 17 inch wheel, this 0.2967 is not the number for you. You need to calculate it on your own and then convert that decimal into sixteenths or 30 seconds in order to measure it on your tape measure. And lastly, if it looks like I made some sort of huge mistake and you guys think my car is going to fall apart, feel free to let me know in the comments section or don't. I guess I can learn the hard way. And if this was really helpful to you, I'd appreciate if you could hit that like button. It's a good way for you to give me some quick, easy feedback and tell me how I'm doing with these videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.